My new kick is Ketone IQ from Health via Modern Nutrition. I've been using it right before I work out and every time I sit down to record in this studio, I know it's working because I can feel my brain activity increase and my body temperature drop. It literally is like having ice in your veins. Ketone IQ is brain fuel that delivers a clean energy boost without sugar or caffeine. Just take a shot whenever you need to re-energize. I won't lie to you, Ketone IQ does not taste great. This is a shot and is meant to be taken just like one. Jet fuel is not meant to be sipped on. When my brain is fueled by ketones, I feel calm, focused, and ready to get after it. That's why 60% of cyclists on the Tour de France use Ketone IQ. It's gonna be the next big thing in sports and it's available right now at Sprouts Nationwide. Save 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ and 10% every month thereafter at hbmn.com slash chael. Just visit hbmn.com slash chael and subscribe upon checkout or click on the link below. Who should fight for a championship? I don't think you need any more information, by the way. I don't think it matters if it's men's or women's or 115 or 265. I don't think it matters. Who should fight for a championship? Go ahead. I'm listening. All right, so we, we did a poll. That was Ryan, guys. We did a poll. We call him Voice of God over here, but we did a poll on our YouTube and 57%. It was just a contest. Who should fight for the belt? And the contest was between uh, Gaethje and Volkanovsky. 57% said Gaethje. Now, as you well know, that is a popularity contest. There's not like factors that go into it. It is purely what do you want to see? And that's a really good person to ask because it's your time and it's your money. What, what if we did go a little bit further, guys? What if we had to come back to my original question? Who should fight for a championship? So, why is it that you believe, just for fun here, well, oh, was that for me? How nice is that? Jeez, look at that. That guy ink over here, how nice, how thoughtful. Spilt. I had Red Bull. I was sipping on it, I was sipping on Red Bull, and I even took the time I put ice in there. Everything's going my way. But I put the little ice. You know, the little tiny ice cubes are hard to get. You shave them down a little bit more. It's almost what they use for snow cones. But that's fun. That creates for a fun texture. At some point, you take a drink. Five or six of them go in your mouth. You chew it. it right? It's, it's a different ice. It was also my downfall. Okay. Make a case for Volkanovsky. Why should he fight for the belt, guys? Why? And he's the champion of the world, Chael. Stupid question. Okay, you're right, but I didn't mean the 45-pound belt. I meant the 55-pound belt. Why should he, who has never won at 155 pounds, cut the line at 155 pounds? He has never beaten anybody at that weight class. He is not the number one contender. He has not gone through the line. He is not ranked. Because I have a feeling if I keep talking to you guys about what should be done before a guy gets a title fight, I have a feeling I'm going to hear from more than half of you the word ranked. I have a feeling I'm going to hear from more than half of you about a guy's record at least of late. He's won his last five in a row. He's six and two in the last ten. I, I have a feeling I am. I'm, I'm going to hear from the ones of you that really want to piss me off, but it doesn't make you wrong. But you want to piss me off, and you're going to tell me about the rankings. Real soon. Soon as we start talking, any weight class, any gender, any way you want to do it, soon as we start talking, what needs to be in place to fight for a title? I'm going to hear from you records. I'm going to hear from you rankings. Volkanovsky isn't ranked. Volkanovsky has never beat anybody. He's not 2-1 and one in the weight class. He's not 10-0 and o in the weight class. He's 0-1. And, and you have a very beautiful story. I have a very beautiful story. You have the guy, but he's, he's ranked number one in the world, pound for pound. That's a title. He puts that title up against the lightweight title. We tried that once. They didn't give him the lightweight title, and they didn't take away his pound for pound title. Which, by the way, sounds right to me. I thought Volk showed enough. Pound for pound, he is the best. But I'm just asking what you have to do for a title. Because whatever your answer is that you don't know. I mean, you should have that answer off the top of your head. 
If you're a sports fan, if you're over here, if you're coming to listen to the professor and you've named yourself one of my students, and I'm happy to have you, but if you've done that, you should be able to answer it. Couldn't you with everything else? Hey, can you bite a guy in this UFC stuff? How long did it take you to come up with no? Can you poke a guy in the eye in this uh, MMA stuff? How long did it take you to come up with no? Is it championship five rounds or 12? How long did it take you to answer the question of five? You could answer everything else. You could switch sports. What's that thing that the, the, the guys with the jersey, they're dribbling, they're trying to get the ball into? It's called a basket. How many quarters is that thing that called the Super Bowl for? You know, but you know right off the top of your head. How come when I ask you what you're going to do for a championship, why does that make you pause? Why? How come? How come you don't have a guess? How come you don't have some kind of a boilerplate right away where you can just start talking? Why? And who is it that decided? When did it get decided? But moreover, who decided? I mean, I watched Benny DeRouche who clearly should be fighting Islam, who would be fighting Islam if it wasn't for the fact that Islam has the belt, who is already scheduled and supposed to take on Islam. Like, you can't tell me Benny and Islam's a bad idea, considering it was already made. It was already done. Joe Rogan said, once it fell apart, don't remake it. I'd like to know why. I think that's a really big deal. And is that a common theme? Do we listen to a smoked out comedian who's never done it often around here? I would like to know that. I would find that interesting. Or was it something specific about that match? I would like to know. Why is Benny not the number one contender after he beat eight men at that division? How did somebody who's been tapped out eight times get the title fight? His name's Charles Oliver. Charles Oliver has done this eight times in that division. And 145 combined. Benny beat eight guys in that division. Why does Charles get the shot? And you're just dying to tell me, boy, you're yelling at Archie. You're wishing I could hear you through the screen. Chael, Charles beat Benny. How, oh, my God, I've got the answer. Is that, is, is that the answer? You beat Benny, you fight for the title? Or is that just good for Charles? Charles tapped out eight times to 55-pounders and 45-pounders including to the guy who has the belt, said three times he doesn't want to do it. The odds makers at DraftKings say you have no chance doing it. Why is Benny not fighting Islam? Why is Volkanovsky being discussed to come up and take the opportunity? What is it that you need to do to fight for a championship? What is it? I would think beating guys in the division would probably be on your list, wouldn't it? Because Benny beat eight of them. In fact, he beat eight out of his last nine. In fact, he beat 10 out of his last 11. I mean, we could keep on playing this game. But he lost his very last one. Does that preclude him? According to you, but a moment ago, I asked you what you had to do, and you didn't say you can't have lost your last one. In fact, you didn't say anything. You stood there silent. So when you stood there silent because you don't know what it takes to get a title fight, why, when you find out a guy had lost his last fight, does that preclude him? Why do you have to have won your last one? Alex Pierre lost his last one. In fact, he lost it by finish at a different weight class. And we made a push to have him versus Jan title fight. We tried. Jamal Hill, in fact, who gave the belt away, got more of a right to an opinion than any of, any, any of us will ever dream of having, said, I guess this fight's going to be for the belt. We were all fine with it. It ended up not happening. But I asked Jim, I'm going to go, what you have to do to fight for a title? You didn't say anything. But we have now concluded that you must have won your last fight. After eight minutes and seven seconds, you've finally given me one thing, which is you must have won your last fight within the weight division. But Alex didn't. Got finished, in fact. And we wanted that to be a title fight. And we all understood why it could be and should be, didn't we? So, at some point in life, I'm not talking about laws, guys. Follow laws. Always follow laws. But at some point in life, you are going to create a box around you. And it might be a real small one. It might be a great big one. But you're going to create the rules. And then you're going to act within them. 
And there'll never be a day when you stop to ask yourself, who said? There'll never be a day when you stop and ask yourself, can I break that rule? I know people in my professional life that are limited to X amount of money a, a year because they have an associate's degree. This is what you make with an associate's degree. I know people with no degree. This is, they, they just, there's no rule, there's no law, and nobody's even said it, but they believe it. It's just, it's just one of those things. So what do you have to do for a title fight? Why should Volk get a title fight over Benny? Volk's never beaten anyone at that weight. Benny beat eight of his last nine. Why should Charles Oliveira be going into a title fight where he's a four-to-one dog and he said he doesn't want to do it not once, not twice, but three times? I'm not bagging on Charles here. By the way, guys, I really respect Charles Oliveira. I'm just suggesting for you, how many times do you want to stand down and stand back? Is Dustin Poirier going to do that now? I mean, I can't imagine as smart as Dustin is that he will, but I'm, I'm just asking, is Dustin a guy that would like to fight for the bell or he'd like to be a backup fighter or he would like to do something that involves a world title fight and or main event and he's going to preclude even offering himself because he fell down on Saturday? Is he? I wouldn't think so. It's not a law, not a rule, it's not even a policy but it is a belief that started in your minds, the viewer, and translated over to the athlete's mind. It's definitely in the manager's mind. I told my managers, give me, give me a title fight against John Jones. I had just lost to Anderson. I said, give me a title fight against John Jones. They couldn't do it. They even laughed. I, I, I didn't understand why they were laughing. Give, give me a title fight with John Jones. And they laughed at me again. I dismissed it. They didn't make the phone call. I finally said that. I said it very polite way, but my words were, here, you're going to make that phone call. They didn't make the phone call. I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to make the phone call myself, but I got to keep you a percent, right? Fair and square. You know, I've always paid on time every time, but if you, if you, don't, if you don't do this and I do do this, right? I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's just a phone call. Are you going to make it? No, I'm not going to make it. Okay, I made the call. And I, by the way, gave those guys their 10%. There's no rules, guys, unless there's a rule. There's no laws unless there's a law. There's no policy unless there's a policy. And I don't think that a jury of our peers is going to believe that Volkanovski, who's never beaten anyone at the weight class, should have the uh, a title fight over Benny, who's beaten eight of his last nine in the weight class. I don't think. Volkanovski lost to Islam and asked for a rematch against Islam, and he was this close to getting it. He was this close. He had just lost, which makes him 0-1 in the division. He's never beaten anyone in the division, ever. And he asked for a title fight. He had just lost his last fight. And he asked for a title fight. He had just lost his last fight to the guy that he asked if he could compete with. And he was this close to getting a yes. Instead, he went and did a world title fight somewhere else. And now he's coming back and doing this. I'm not against Volkanovski, not at all. I'm sharing the difference. Some guys out there think like you and they believe it. And Benny DeRouge, who is the, clearly the number one contender and has said nothing. Benny's not a number one contender because I say so. Benny's not so, because the rankings say so. Benny's not a number one contender because Benny says so. Benny believes because he lost his last fight, he doesn't get a fight for a title. That's what he believes. When's the last time you told somebody they're wrong? In anything in life, when's the last time you told somebody they're wrong? When's the last time you told somebody that was a train killer who you know could beat your ass that they're wrong? So imagine how many people, as wrong as Benny is, imagine how many people are going to tell him. And instead, a guy who's never won in the weight class is going to come take your spot away, if I was to make a prediction. 